Hello everybody out there in the 2D game design world. This is Daniel Hofmann from Strictly 2D with a quick view at a brand new feature I have discovered just two days ago in Unity's brand new beta version 2018. I am talking about skeletal animation. Maybe some of you already have experiences in the field and work with tools like Spine, Spriter or Anima 2D. While Anima 2D is an asset you can download for free from the asset stores, the other two are third-party tools you can use to create bones for your sprite textures. This enables you to move the body parts of your sprite from keyframe to keyframe and save you a lot of time because you do not have to draw each keyframe by hand. Unity is currently developing an editor implementation for this kind of animation method. The bad news is that Unity's own skeletal animation is still in phase 1, which means that you are only able to take one sprite at a time for animation. And this definitely is a limitation, as every realistic character is usually combined of multiple sprite parts consisting of several limbs. On the other hand, Unity's skeletal concept is easy to understand and will be really powerful once finished. In this video, I will show you the basic concepts you need to know to get started right away with the beta version. This way you can use the full potential of this editor as soon as Unity has finished phase 2 and implemented it in an official release. Sounds good? Let's get started! To play around with the skeletal animation preview you need to do two things. Download at least Unity version 2018.1 beta or above and second the sample project from the link below. To activate the skeletal animation in your own project you will have to search the manifest.json file in the project folder and change the following lines. After that you will be able to open a sprite of your choice in the sprite editor and now you will find two additional entries in the upper left corner. First is the bone editor to define the hierarchy of skeletal bones for your sprite and the second is the skin weights and geometry editor to assign each of the bones you defined previously to certain areas of your sprite. In the lower right corner of the bone editor you will find a group called tools of which the first icon is the create bone tool. This I can use to create the root bone for a chain of bones. I start with the hip bone and drag the length of this bone by holding the left mouse button down. Release to create the follow up bone which is the torso bone and I create the bone for the head. I will finish this chain by pressing the right mouse button. I want to create the arm bones at a certain distance away from the existing bone chain. For this I use the create free bone tool while keeping the head bone of the character selected. Then I switch back to the create root bone tool and add the lower arm and the hand bone to the upper arm bone. I continue to proceed with this method for the right arm and both legs as well. Next the bones need to be connected to the character's geometry by defining a mesh of vertices. This can easily be done by switching to the skin weights and geometry editor and experimenting a little bit with the parameters in the selection menu for the entry geometry in the upper toolbar. After clicking on the generate button you will receive a fairly satisfying representation of your character as a mesh of vertices. Fine tuning of course is always possible by using the create vertex, create edge or split edge entry in the geometry editor. The last step to finish the skeletal construction of our character is to assign weights to each of the bones. Within the skin weights and geometry editor we click on the weights button to activate the weights map 
for the bones of our character. As there are no weights assigned yet, we only see a black area around a colored representation of our bones hierarchy. If we now click on auto, the weights editor automatically generates a weight map for our skeleton. Each bone now has a direct influence on moving or deforming the character's mesh. And this influence is visible in the colored area around the bone. To resize the area of influence for a specific bone, you can use the weight editor in the lower right. Select the bone for which you want to change the influence of its weight and either use the slider tool to increase or decrease the weight's influence on the character as a whole or the brush tool to paint over the areas for which you want to alter the weight. Once you're satisfied with the influence of all bones, click on apply in the upper right corner of the sprite editor and you're done with the skeleton construction for animation. Next we drag our character into the scene and add a component called sprite skin to it. Pressing on the create bones button of this component will create game objects for all the bones we created before and now you will see the skeleton construction of our character directly in the scene view. From this point on we can continue with the well-known unity animation process by First, adding an animator to our character. Second, create a folder animation in our project view. And third, create an animator controller inside of this folder. Now we drag the animation controller on our animator and while our character game object is selected, we switch to the animation window to create a new short animation clip. I call mine jump, save it in the animation folder and start by pressing the record button in the lower left to begin recording my keyframes for the character. I slightly move the bones to generate keyframes at the starting position of my character and then switch to the midpoint of the animation clip which is the frame 30 in my case. At this position I move the character into the air and spread the arms and legs to their highest move points. After that I return to the starting frame, copy the keyframes and move to the end position of my animation clip which is frame 60. Here I insert the keyframes from the starting position and if I now hit on play you will see that I have created a quick animation clip in no time using the skeleton construction I defined before. Last but not least I'd like to show you how you can implement the feature of inverse kinematics to your sprite bone construction. First add an IK manager 2D component to the game object where you have placed your sprite skin component before. The IK manager will take care of the management of all the IK components you add to your character. Hitting the plus sign for the IK solvers array gives you the opportunity to choose between three methods of IK solving. If you want to dig deeper into this topic I recommend you to have a look at the documentation in the video description. I use the CCD solver 2D IK component to establish inverse kinematics for the left arm of the character. The CCD solver 2D script which is now generated needs a target bone 
and an effector. The effector simply is a transform which the bones of an IK chain try to follow if you move it. So first I create a transform, name it L-arm effector and place it at the end of the left arm bone as this shall be the last bone in the chain. I drag the L-arm effector transform on the effector field of the CCD solver 2D script for the left arm bone and the left hand bone which is the bone 6 for my character I drag on the target field. Now I choose the chain length for the averse kinematic of 3. Disable the constraint rotation checkbox as I still want to be able to rotate the first bone in the chain. And as you can see I am still able to rotate the hand of the left arm by selecting the left hand bone and as well I am able to move the left arm as a whole if I click on the CCD Solver 2D game object which is represented by the left arm effector transform as a circle. So if I move this circle around the left arm as a whole moves with it. This was just a short introduction into the new possibilities Unity will soon implement into an official release. Please subscribe to support me, give it a thumbs up and I promise I'll soon be back with more exciting 2D game design stuff.